worked with, um, you know, tremendous casting directors, both in the U.S. as well as um, in Hong Kong. And so um, it was uh, really exciting, you know, because I had to specify, you know, the the factors that were important. So for Mercy, it was not important that she could speak Korean because as a character, she doesn't, but it was important that she felt very American and very New York and um, had a sort of inner um, darkness about her. You know, there was that there was something quite um, um, deeper than just what she was presenting, right? And so, and then, but you know, with uh, Hillary casting Star You Blue, um, similarly, you know, wanted her to feel sophisticated in the lead, even though she was Indian. So just kind of going through all of that, but then, you know, in Hong Kong, obviously we needed people who could speak Cantonese and who very much felt like locals. And so it was really exciting. Um, you know, we also brought um, Ruby Ruiz, who's a um, Filipina actor from, the, uh, uh, from Manila, and we brought, we auditioned her in Manila and then flew her out to Hong Kong. So it was just actually this really exciting opportunity to, to cast globally. I loved Sorry You from the minute we, it's one of the loveliest pieces of casting. For me, it's when, you know, it's a great sign of a director and a writer when you believe every single one of those people were just perfectly cast from De Young, from Sorry You, and, and, and we fell right into it. It was beautiful. I mean, sorry, I'm, I'll pass it over Sorry You, and she's going to say the opposite. She was like, I hated it. <laughs> no, I'm over here nodding profusely. I, I felt the exact same way. I was going to say, you know, one of the things I loved, the minute we, you know, Lulu connected us, and we got onto the phone and started chatting, and it was just like, complete fireworks. We just were going, yeah. we were, you know, we're both very effusive people, I think. And so we got so excited so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. But what was really great, Jack, and what I loved was we really had to go through and break down what was our past like together? What was yeah. our, what was our past so that we could be in the present now, right? And so absolutely. We, we really took that time and that's something that um, I noticed with the way Lulu works all around. Lulu, I'm sorry, I'm speaking for you. Tell me if I'm incorrect. <laughs> But I did see such intentionality in at least getting us all connected so that by the time yeah. we got to set, it wouldn't feel like day one, you know? Comfortable from, the, from day one. It was that. instantly on set. So true, the comfort level. And, and you weren't afraid element, to take risks, you know? Yeah, yeah, and the other element with your casting is that we were all people who wanted to play and just go at it you know let's we were all ready to rumble and that's again a testament to the casting process that you did lulu and professionals newer to the industry it didn't matter we all just wanted to be in the ring together and you really felt that on set no you know again just lulu herself is um she's got such great humor so you know the <laughs> most brilliant part about tragedy is that it goes hand in hand with comedy sometimes because life is absurd Mm -hmm. And uh, Lulu's brilliant at sort of shining a bit of a, a light on the absurdity of life. And that these things are, you are allowed to laugh at things. Because if you didn't laugh, you'd bloody cry, you know? It's, um, it's, it's such a wonderful view because I think it's, it's far more um, like life than other times when sure. you're, you know, doing something which is pure drama. I think one's allowed to find these things, you know, absurdly funny sometimes. Because otherwise, it, it is. It's it's a very heavy heavy material. Yeah. I I don't know if there's any way to feel prepared when approaching a project of, of this scale and, and a challenge at this level. I think the the thing that uh, propelled me there was a couple things. One, you know, um, Lulu and Nicole and everyone else involved in the casting process. They're such incredible um, storytellers. So I think they're not gonna. Uh, waste their time with someone who can't do the job well. So I, I put a lot of trust into their judgment. Um, and I think also just the that feeling of these roles that are so complex and so interesting, they don't come around very often. So it would be a it would be remiss to not jump into it with everything that I have and give it everything I've got. Well, I guess as far as character is concerned, I think um, it was one of these characters that was most closest and related to myself, me being a father, 
Clark is a father. I think we have very similarities as far as how we want to be fathers. And in that sense, having this kind of tragic situation happen that I wouldn't wish upon any, my worst enemy for and mm -hmm. to be able to process through that yet still hold the family dynamic together was such an incredible challenge in a good way and the way that Lulu has kind of created this arc not just with my character but with all the characters and us kind of coming together yet dealing with them individually mm -hmm. was just this brilliant moment for me to to just really sink my teeth in so you know it started from myself through the character and then especially when I got to set and was able to really bring Clark's family unit together. I spent a lot of time with the kids. I thought that was really extremely important to really kind of fulfill and, and make, uh, I would say, note that this family dynamic is very real and relatable. I prepared with my team as we always do on our films, um, which is, you know, we do a lot of um, location scouting and research on the ground. It's really important that we spend time in the place that we are filming in and incorporate things that we learn, things that we see, things that we hear. Um, and we um, shot listed, you know, we created really extensive mood boards and reference images. Um, and, you know, we rehearsed with the cast as well. We had some of them spend time together um, if they were a family and they were supposed to know each other very intimately. And then we kept other actors apart, like Nicole Kidman and Ji Young Yu, because they're meant to be strangers who have, have this trauma between them. And so we, I intentionally didn't want them to get to know each other very well. Well, aside from the amazing Lulu who called and sort of um, pitched uh, the show to me um, as a, a, you know a, a middle-aged man going through a midlife crisis, and um, that I had to eat a lot <laughs> uh, and put on a lot of weight, and would I be uncomfortable running around in the nude? Um, all to which I said yes because I've had the amazing like luck of getting to work with Lulu before, and I knew it would be incredible and. She didn't disappoint. I mean, it was such an amazing character to play, so human. Um, so when I, see, you know, you could look at him as the sort of villain, but you know, I, I think he's sort of beautifully flawed as all humans are. And he's going through, um, you know, the way Lulu constructed this, um, you know, you reveal more and more and you begin to understand David more and more. As, you know, the episodes progress, just like in life, it's, um, you know, we we all can, you know, it's, it's a wonderful angle to also look at the perpetrators, the people who committed these horrible acts or have done something regrettable or, you know, an accident that went horribly wrong and to say that these guys also uh, suffer from trauma. So it was an amazing perspective to look at. And so did most of your preparation involve eating a lot? Yeah, a lot of eating. <laughs> A lot of eating. Um, I know it's, it's the first time, um, I remember Lulu would like um, send me messages uh, literally checking to see if I was eating. <laughs> the best. It's very funny. The best. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's very true that your, your body and your brain doesn't necessarily know the difference between when you're acting and when you're not. Um, even if consciously you're not, your subconscious might not. Um, that was actually a really big learning curve on this show um, because I hadn't done TV before and a limited series, especially the way we shot it. We shot it all out of order. So we would jump from, you know, episode two to episode six to episode three. Um, so a lot of what I was doing to prepare was honestly just making sure that I had the story in my head and that I could keep the, you know, six and a half hours worth of plot in my brain at all times. And I think in terms of the stepping in and out of the emotional stuff, I, I think I'm still learning how to do that. It, it's tough. I think getting into it with great writing like we had on this show is easy. Um, but it's the getting out of it that's a little trickier. I think when you play opposite someone of that level and of that caliber and of that stature, right? I think in any actor's career, you almost dream about this particular moment. And what I find is very similar to what Lulu did is, is because she's at such a level, right? Kind of the bar is set so incredibly high, but what she allows is kind of 
for us to kind of move beyond that level, right? She kind of gives over to the scene, the situation, and the characters, and, and really kind of evens the playing field so we can just live and breathe and grow beyond whatever that level is kind of there for. So in that instance, I mean, it was incredibly, such an incredible experience to be able to have that process with her, and then for us together to kind of to move beyond that and really try to elevate and, and be a part of this dynamic story that is all incredibly, you know, elevated and emotional and based on this humanity and really kind of dive in as much as we could. I think I'm always, like most of us actors, I'm just looking for roles that are thrilling and challenging and have some meat and a dimensional human being, you know? That, to me, is always exciting. I love comedy, but what I love about Lulu is there's this intense story and then she pivots and then we get a moment of comedy that's cutting the tension. So it's all there. Um, and I think what drew me to it was just that, you know, opportunities for um, Asians, South Asians, these are still really getting more and more in the, you know, world of cinema and television. And I think that getting the opportunity to play a layered woman who has a complex storyline, who has hopes, dreams, dreams dash, friends, friendships that are getting fragmented, what's not to love? I would say, if I may, like, the most challenging and remarkable scene is the same scene that I experienced. I think the very first scene that Nick and I had was the scene the moment we found out about this tragedy. And it was a scene at the night market and you you couldn't, we couldn't be more raw and more bare and just letting our souls loose. And that was our very first scene. So we just had to jump into the pool and really allow ourselves to go there. And it was fighting and screaming and, and crying and yelling and holding and comforting and all of these things. And immediately, like an instant, it was like the Big Bang, mm. right? And we oh. had 20 yeah. years, 25 plus years of relationship all into a moment. And then from then on, literally, you'll see that's that's the culmination of that moment. Yeah. It's tough, that, isn't it? It's, um, and it's the best way sometimes to do it. Yeah. Is like jump yeah. in the deep end. Yeah. And I think, you know, on this, it, like there were a lot of sort of scary moments of things that one had to do but you felt like you were in such good hands and such safe hands and you were being guided and directed so beautifully, um, uh, you know, and opposite so many wonderful, talented people that, you know, every day was scary, but in a beautiful way because we were really dealing with real shit. Yeah, I <laughs> think know? it's such a vulnerable story and yeah. each character is kind of bare naked. Mm. Some of us literally. Quite literally. Quite yeah. literally. Um, <laughs> that it's 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 that it's really kind of allowing yourself to go there you know i think that i can answer both of those questions with one answer which is the most challenging and the most remarkable um f was filming um a lot of the what is known in hong kong as the maid's picnic and so we actually filmed it during uh sunday um which is when many of the domestic workers uh, have their day off and they're out in the streets and, um, and you know, we had all of these extras and it was tremendously challenging because this episode takes place during a storm. And so we had rain machines, wind machines, and we had to make sure that the, we could only shoot when there was not, when it wasn't sunny. And so incredibly challenging to, with all of these extras, you know, having to wait for the sun to go behind a cloud and then start the rain machine. And sometimes we would start the rain machine and then the sun would come out. We'd be like, no, cut, cut. Um, and so it was definitely very challenging and kind of this combination of documentary and fiction at the same time, um, because, you know, so many of the extras that we had cast were also wowed by, you know, how we were making it rain suddenly um, in this very large portion of the street. Um, but it was just remarkable because there was such an energy in the air and it's one of the reasons that I became a filmmaker um, is, is to, you know, just be in that kind of environment and trying to capture this thing that is so magical. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, as I was saying, I mean, I, in this one, it was, it's interesting because um, when Lulu called me, she said, um, listen, I'd love you to come do it, but you have to put on 20 
plus pounds and um, run around naked, which uh, she um, she decided to give me a sock in the scene, uh, which was just a, she's got a lot of humour, Lulu, and that's one of the nice things is when you're dealing with very difficult things, mm. it's nice to be able to laugh, and we did a lot of laughing because you know. If you didn't laugh, you cry. Yeah. <laughs> it's the old saying. <laughs> we filmed all over Hong Kong, um, in Kowloon, in, um, on Hong Kong Island. Um, you know, we, we also filmed on a boat in the middle of the ocean where you could see all of these little islands. Um, one of my favorite places to film is this neighborhood called Meifu. It's a local neighborhood um, that is sort of, you know, not a place that you would normally visit, but I really loved um, the architecture there and um, I loved um, having Nicole Kidman there, you know, putting her in, the, in this apartment um, that was a, a place where she really felt quite foreign. I just sometimes want to be alone, where I'm not somebody's wife, not somebody's mother, where I'm not defined by tragedy. Don't you ever miss it, home? I like our life here. <laughs> the help, the drivers, it makes everything easier. I see his family. You know you always say that, right? You're her employer, not her friend. You know, Hong Kong was supposed to be a fresh start for me. A fresh start, really? At 24? I think my marriage is over. Has David been home? No, ma'am. What might stop doing you? Do you ever imagine yourself living a completely different life? just watching them every second even when your eyes are closed and I have no idea how it happened no one should ever have to go through what you're going through I think we need to think about getting out of here because we're drowning and you don't see it the minute our feet leave Hong Kong soil we are abandoning our son Alam nating lahat ng tungkol sa employer natin. Mga sekreto na kahit pinakamalapit na kaibigan niya ay hindi alam. Not a moment goes by where I'm not thinking about what I've done. People like me, do they ever move on? You're not betraying anyone by trying to live a better life. We all need to keep living. Even you.